Hello, my name is Cheryl Joachim and I represent the communities of Hopkins and St. Louis Park in the Minnesota House. I'd like to thank you all for being here with us today as, as well as the folks from Min Fire Initiative for bringing the Hometown Heroes program forward. They have kept the health and safety of our firefighters in the spotlight. A little over four years ago, Min Fire started a 24-hour hotline with funds from a small grant and many fundraisers. Within the first week of the hotline being open, it became apparent that there was a dire need for health services in our firefighting community. Firefighters face cancer, cardiac issues, and mental health challenges at higher rates than the rest of our population just for doing their jobs. Jobs that we ask them to do and that many of us are not willing or able to do. They perform these jobs without hesitation and we need to have their backs. The Hometown Heroes program will provide essential services to our firefighters. I've heard from both my chiefs in Hopkins and St. Louis Park as well, from fire, as well as from fire chiefs around the state, what this program would mean to them and their departments. Both the wide ranging and immediately benefits expanding this program would have to our firefighters in every community across the state. And the stories you will hear today paint a picture of the sense of urgency. I'm proud to help lead this charge in the house with representatives and I'm very happy to report that this bill has bipartisan support. Now I'd like to turn it over to our author in the Senate Senator Jeff Howe. Well, thank you. Thank you, Representative Joachim. And as she said, I'm Senator Jeff Howe and I've had the privilege to serve 27 years in the fire service with both career and paid on call departments. I'm honored to work on the Hometown Heroes Assistance Program that will aid those firefighters that suffer from heart disease and cancer. Having to watch too, too many of my fellow firefighters and their families struggle in fighting these occupational hazards, I believe this has been too long in coming. If we expect firefighters to come when we call, we need to answer their call. This legislation will provide firefighters who are battling cancer and heart disease the aid they need to help them cope with the trauma they face. I also have the honor today to introduce Chris Parsons with the Minnesota Professional Firefighters. I've worked with Chris Parsons and the Minnesota Professional Firefighters Association in the past to help prevent firefighter cancer. Now I have the privilege to work with them again on the Hometown Heroes Assistance Program. And I, I'm, I'm just honored to do that and I'll turn it over to you, Chris. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Senator Howe, and thank you, uh, Representative Joachim, for uh, putting this bill forward, the Minnesota Hometown Heroes Assistance Program. Um, this bill, well, first of all, I'm, I'm Chris Parsons, and I represent uh, the Minnesota Professional Firefighters, which uh, we represent about 2,000 career firefighters located all across the state of Minnesota, and we uh, fully support the Minnesota Hometown Heroes um, uh, Protection Act. Uh, the issues plaguing the fire service uh, around cancer, cardiac, and emotional trauma are real. Uh, numerous studies have shown that firefighters contract a variety of cancers at a uh, much greater rate than the general population. Um, and that's, that's even taking into account that firefighters tend to be healthier than the general population. Numerous studies have also shown that um, uh, deaths on the fire ground are, uh, um, are, are uh, more than half uh, cardiac related. Um, and uh, we're also seeing that firefighters are dealing with um, emotional trauma and mental health issues at a, a greater, much greater rate than the general population. The suicide rate is somewhere between uh, uh, twice as, as much as the general population to six times as much, uh, depending on the information that you're looking at. So um, the, the need for this bill is real and it would, uh, the day after its enactment, it would um, uh, benefit 22,000 firefighters and first responders all over the state. So um, we need to get this done and uh, thank you all for being here today. Hi, good morning. I'm John Cunningham, president of the Minnesota State Fire Chiefs Association. Uh, the Minnesota Fire Service is made up of over 20,000 dedicated firefighters that devote so much of their life to serve their communities. Your local firefighters are your neighbors, family, friends, coworkers, business owners, and retirees that donate so much to help those in need. 
As Chris Parson says, uh, this will positively impact every firefighter in Minnesota the day that it becomes law and is greatly overdue. And we certainly appreciate the support from our authors to push this forward so that we can benefit every firefighter in Minnesota. Now, it's uh, my honor to introduce uh, Mark Rosenblum, president of the Minnesota State Fire Department Association. Mark. I am Mark, like uh, Chief Cunningham said. I'm the president of the State Fire Department Association. We represent uh, many or most of the fire departments in the state. The Hometown Heroes Bill is groundbreaking in Minnesota and long overdue, as others have mentioned. We need to make this happen sooner than later, as every day new incidents of cardiac cancer and mental health issues are arising as, as a result of being part of the fire service. Together, in a united front, you represent all of the firefighters in the great state of Minnesota. We need the support that this important legislation will provide. Now, I have the opportunity to introduce uh, Steve Shapira, a former St. Paul firefighter and cancer survivor. Thanks, Mark, and thanks everyone for the time. Uh, my name is Steve Shapira. I'm a retired St. Paul fire captain, and uh, my story starts back in 2014. Well, I started having some what I thought was routine stomach pain. And after months of tests and referrals to a couple of different places, I ended up at the University of Minnesota. Uh, there my internist took a look at my CT scan and he walked in and he clicked the computer three times. And in that five seconds, he looked at me and said, you have non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Uh, at that point, I realized everything in my life was gonna change. My finances were gonna be in jeopardy, my relationships with my wife, my kids, certainly my employment status. And I went on to have 20 aggressive rounds of chemotherapy over the course of two and a half years. Uh, as a result of my occupational firefighter cancer, I was forced into retirement at an early age. And uh, there's not, I, I can say there's not a day that goes by that still all these years later that I'm not affected by this diagnosis. And ironically, actually today, um, I get my results back from my annual scan to see if this menace firefighter occupational cancer is back. So I stand here for all the firefighters who are unable to stand here as a survivor. And in particular, I stand today for my friend, Mike Piter, who was an active St. Paul firefighter who passed away in August. Thank you for your time. And with that, I'll turn it over to Jen. Oh, good morning. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you all today. Um, just a little bit of background on myself. Um, some of you may know my husband, Matt France, passed away unexpectedly uh, December 9th, 2013. His day started out very early uh, as the pager rang its loud noise and called him out for a mutual aid chimney fire. Um, he had returned home just in time to get another a little bit of rest before he went to his civilian job as a UPS driver. Um, we were in contact throughout the day off and on uh, through text message and, you know, just our regular usual banter, you know, joking around and whatnot. Um, around 4.30 p.m. that day, he was no longer responding to my messages. I was a little concerned, but I figured he was busy only to find three hours later, sheriff's deputy sitting in my driveway to give me the news that even seven years later, still hits as fresh as it was that day, that my husband had a massive heart attack and was not gonna be returning home. Sorry. Uh, his death due to heart attack was really hard for me to accept because he was a very healthy 42 year old man. He was fit and he exercised daily. He ran marathons and it was just something that was hard for me to even fathom. Um, as a chief on a volunteer fire department in our local community, he was very strongly encouraged his fire family to take care of themselves and to be healthy and um, to reach out when they were having difficulties. He wanted them to be sure that 
they were always going to be there for their families and their, including their fire families. But as we all know, circumstances are just out of our control. And I believe that if he were still here, um, it would have been one of his top priorities to make sure his fellow firefighters were staying healthy, not only in, in body, but in mind. And I know he would want to make sure that for themselves and their families and their fellow firefighters, they had all the support that they could get. And so I believe he himself would have been right at the forefront of this, this um, bill and he would have wanted the Hometown Heroes Assistance Program to be passed. So as for me, I don't want anyone to have to go through and experience what my family and I have. Uh, losing my husband showed me firsthand that this legislation, legislation like the Hometown Heroes Assistance Program is needed for Minnesota's firefighters and their families. And this is why I strongly urge legislators to pass this bill swiftly in 2021. Thank you again for your time. And I believe at this time we will open it up for your question. If folks have questions, they can unmute themselves or they can enter it in the chat. Hello, this is John Croman from Carolina. Okay. Yes, yes, we can. Uh, what has been the, the resistance to this in the I know that in some communities, firefighters were required to disclose their moonlighting jobs, uh, their other jobs, um, because of, uh, you know, this notion that they could have multiple exposures to these health issues. Where, where is the kind of the resistance been to this in the past? I'll take a shot at that, John. My name is George Esmondson. I'm president of the Minnesota Firefighter Initiative. And thank you all for being on the call today. Um, the resistance appears to be, you know, purely a financial one. Um, you know, the issue in Minnesota is that we have a long um, and not so proud history of not supporting the fire service in Minnesota. We rank 21st as a state in the nation and population. And we support the fire service at the 48th uh, ranking level. So we're second from the very lowest in uh, tax dollars invested in the Minnesota Fire Service. And that's that, that continues to be a challenge. So the challenge is gonna be finding the funding to implement these five-pronged approach to support Minnesota's firefighters. It has a fiscal note of around $7 million a year annually. You know, you know, George, I agree with that. Uh, finding the funds is going to be a challenge, but I will say that, uh, you know, last year, I think COVID got in the way of, of making progress on this, but I know that there's at least two or three uh, clone bills floating around the Senate right now on this very initiative. So we've got much more support, bipartisan support this year than we had when we first introduced this. So the education that we've been doing with uh, fellow legislators, I think it will really help and uh, uh, help us push this across the line. And I think, uh, you know, we will see, I, I am very, very optimistic that we'll, we'll see some progress and maybe have success this session. So I, I'm, I'm optimistic. That's great to hear, Senator. Absolutely. Okay, do we have any more questions? Would, uh, would this, John again from CARE 11, would this apply uh, across the board, both to the people in the, the uh, volunteer departments, uh, the largely volunteer departments and the, and the uh, professional uh, full-time uh, staff of those cities? That is correct. All 22,000 Minnesota firefighters are covered day one when this goes, uh, bill passes, and then when it takes effect.
Okay, do we have any more questions? I don't see any in the chat. I think we'll wait a minute. And with that, we'll go to closing remarks from Rep. Akeem and Senator Howe. Just want to thank you for being here today and keeping this in the spotlight. It's a really important bill. Um, it's been a long road, but the need is definitely out there, and we just have to find the political will to find the money, which, which is there as well. We have to stop talking about scarcity when we are talking about taking care of people and taking care of our first responders. Well, thank you. I tell you what, uh, I think this is adds to our efforts at getting the, the word out there on what this thing will, what this bill will do and what this legislation will do for all of our communities and those that are protecting our communities. And, and it's, it's far, far too long to have this done. We've, uh, to watch my fellow firefighters suffer from this is, is just, traumatic. I, I've been out of the fire service, I believe, since uh, 2011 or 12. I still carry my cancer insurance because I think it's, it's, you just, it doesn't affect you just while you're serving. It continues. And even though I'm retired, I won't be covered by this. Uh, we need to take care of those folks that are serving. And, and this is just a, a way to get that done. And, and yeah, I just can't ask for folks to to continue to talk about this and get this out there. We can we can make this happen this year. So I thank you for being here and and thank you for continuing to get this message out to people. Thank you, everybody.